Cool. Uh, yeah, so I guess uh, the overview of the informal hub team's work, um, I can probably let Marius take more of a lead on that. Um, but uh, but yeah, obviously the stride launch um, happened. So congratulations to the stride team. So want to take it from there, Marius? Uh, sure, yeah. So as you said, we, we help with the stride launch, uh, different uh, issues with the validators, with Kia Simon, but everything went fine. Uh, actually, it feels like it went too easy. It's, uh, I was scared for like afterwards for one day that something bad happened. It cannot be that easy, but yeah, that was amazing. Um, yeah, we have uh, we are working on Gaia V11. So uh, there was uh, a post on the Hub Forum. You will have a link there. Um, with uh, the information of what is included in the in Gaia V11, the testnet was upgraded today. I just got confirmation from uh, Dante that everything went fine, so that's great. We are now uh, working to cut the final release, uh, like 11.00. So, and we plan to put it uh, to put a hub proposal this week, so it will be either tomorrow or on Friday, which means that two weeks proposal like voting period. We will estimate something like what 28 of uh, I don't know uh, two weeks afterwards but we want to upgrade the hub always on a Wednesday so the upgrade time will be August 16. Right, so this is what we decided to do to facilitate to make uh, the life of validators easier right so it will be a Wednesday at 3 I think it's 3 p.m UTC that was the decision that was taken so yeah that's um, the major things in v11 are the global fee refactoring uh fixing a bug in the global fee module the the update to replicate security v2 so that uh, contains a bunch of things that uh, happened since we released v1 um including soft opt-out and uh, sovereign to consumer changeover or send alone to consumer and the very important part is the removal of the liquidity module state right so is this work that dong sam did so thanks a lot for that and uh, this is the first part towards actually removing the liquidity module completely so now we withdraw all the funds and the, the next iteration will just remove the module completely uh, yeah those are the major things changed then any questions regarding V11 before I move on? No. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just, just a quick one. Which, uh, approximately when? When? When what? Uh, V11. Ah, uh, so the upgrade to uh, August 16th. Oh, sweet. Awesome. Yeah. So we do plan. I think Jehan was mentioning this in the previous. Uh, in the previous meeting, so two weeks ago, that we want to have this regular cadence of upgrades. So unless we really don't have anything to upgrade, but usually at least we can bump some dependencies and stuff like this. But uh, unless we really don't have anything, we plan to upgrade uh, maybe twice per quarter, maybe even more often, so to have this regular cadence to not and to not wait for features. Right? When features are ready, they are getting in. Right? And there's a reason. Uh, oh, I like that. Yeah, so like just sort of do the upgrades as a matter of course, keep everything up to date. And when the features land, they land. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Because before it was always these things, let's delay something because we are waiting for something else. And this is was exactly the thing that we decided the last time to we discussed with also the stride team to delay the LSM. To not to delay it because it's not delayed, but to not delay V11 due to the LSM. Right, so LSM is still in review. There is a, that's the link to the pull request. And uh, we are targeting V12 for that. And the, also the interesting part that there is nothing else tar uh, targeted for V12, so just LSM. So that means that as soon as LSM is production ready, we can put it in V12. The only restriction is that we cannot have overlapping proposals on the hub. But that means that the worst case scenario, if LSM will be ready today, we need to wait or today. When we put a proposal, we need to wait two weeks. That's it. 
right? So uh, that that shouldn't be a problem. Uh, so yeah, the LSM is in review. We are still, uh, I think it's a, a lot of uh, reviewing was done. I think we are in late stages. They are, we are making progress with, so the strike team is making progress with testing. Uh, there are discussion with the Haifa team, so they can go more into detail than, uh, in, a, in a few seconds. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's with LSM. So V12 will probably happen in uh, yeah somewhere in Q3. I like in a, in one month, in two weeks. How, as soon as it's ready, it's hard to estimate exactly now. Then. Um, so this is basically Gaia V12, let's say, so or Gaia with LSM on it. And then the other thing that we want to do in this quarter, which is very important, is the upgrade to, to bump SDK to 047. So at the moment, Gaia, as everybody knows, it's on 045. It's a little bit of a pain because there are a bunch of features that we want to bring from 47 and from IBC7. Um, so we are, it's work in progress. We are almost uh, so we made a lot of progress of integrating everything you can follow there the epic there is a link um so we are targeting this for uh, f uh, this uh, thing for the end of q3 i don't know if it will be guided 13 or whatever but again as i said we do not plan features for certain releases we just have releases and one is ready is ready um, there are two requirements that are quite uh, important both of them one is we are trying to audit some, at least if not all, probably not all because there are a lot, but some of the differences between 0.45 and 0.47, especially the ones that are more, that may have more of an impact, right? So um, we are in discussions with potential auditors and we'll try as soon as possible to get, uh, to get something going and uh, also maybe create a priority list of what's important to look at. Um, if so, you were to ping us that priority list can definitely have time. He's, he's doing security, uh, go through it. He he's, he's vicious. It's great. That would be great. Yeah. So as soon as we have a priority list, we can make it public. I don't see any problem with that. Um, the important part is that whatever is audited for this particular case will be also as a building block for auditing. Uh, the next iteration of SDK, so SDK 050, because it's building on top of 47. It's not removing all the 47. Uh, yeah, some things may be deprecated, but still it's useful. The other requirement for upgrading to 47 is the LSM. So the liquid staking module will need to be upgraded as well. At the moment, it's on 45. Uh, so it will be integrated in the current version of Gaia. Uh, yeah, it will need to be upgraded. Uh, just, uh, but we are in discussions with the uh, with the Stry team and the inclusion team to to for this work. So yeah, this is Gaia with forty seven. Then uh, other things that we are doing are continuing work on throttling. On uh, the second version of throttling, we already have a PR that is in review. Uh, continue work on cryptographic equivocation. Uh, yeah, that's. That's more complex than we initially thought. That because we are trying to, we're trying to do something quite different, right? To to use the mechanism you, uh, that was used before to to basically make a light client inactive, right? So to expire a light client, not expire. It's actually to freeze a light client. The, we use the same mechanism now to slash. So we need to make sure that there are no false positives there, right? Uh, it needs to really, so the mechanism has to be 100% correct because we are talking about slashing uh, for double signing. Um, so yeah, it, it, we are continuing the work there and start working on improving test, the testing framework on interchange security, which will also include in, improving testing for uh, Gaia in general. Uh, so we are coming here with uh, with a concrete plan, and as soon as we have it, uh, like we figure out exactly what we want to do, we'll make it public. Uh, and I see that uh, Jehan added some things on the product side, so I will let I'll him. Yeah, yeah. If there are any questions for the parts that I was covering? No. Okay. 
Great. John? Uh, yeah, so I'll start with fraud votes. Um, this is something that's been in discussion um, publicly for like a, a month now or, or a little more. Um, and uh, fraud votes basically the, is, is, is basically the idea you'd have a governance proposal, which would be used to slash validators who commit incorrect execution. And um, there's a forum post about it, um, about why why it's needed and um, and everything. And and basically, it's needed as a as a substitute for fraud proofs or zero knowledge validity proofs um, for enabling mesh security or opt in security. Uh, it's a way to, to use those types of security before um, that stuff is fully available um, because fraud proofs and zk validity proofs are very complicated, and there are no currently no uh, very few working frameworks. I think it might be if you look at l2beat.com um, for most most roll up stuff on Ethereum is not not done. That's Rollups use the same technology. Um, and uh, then also there's the added hurdle of having it work for Cosmos SDK. So not getting into all the details, we've discussed it before on these calls, there's discussion in the forum and stuff. It seems to me like there weren't really any serious objections raised in the forum. Um, and so what, what I'm doing now is moving it into a signaling proposal stage. Um, and I have the signaling proposal mostly written. One of the tough parts though, is that a little bit of the implementation details depend on how opt-in security or mesh security will work. Um, so there might be a little bit of design work to be done. So it's not exactly a proposal for a completed feature that says exactly how uh, it will work. Um, it's more of a signaling proposal for like, you know, are you okay with having votes to determine that somebody has committed incorrect execution and, and slash them? Um, and so one of the things I wonder is like, I want to keep the process moving ahead um, because we had the discussion about from the theoretical perspective already on the forum. Um, so I want to bring it to the, the proposal where maybe more people will pay attention. It might bring out more people who have issues with it. Um, but I also don't necessarily want to have the signaling proposal, which is low on details and um, goes out, you know, a long time before the, the feature actually lands. Um, so I've just got to decide kind of how, how the timing uh, how the timing is and, and whether we really want to do it now. Um, but I mean, it's a very simple feature, so it's pretty well defined what it's going to do. Um, so um, that's one of the things. Um, but yeah, likely I will put that up. Uh, we'll see. Um, I've also been working on a lot of, uh, I mean, working on a lot of plans around uh, or sort of research, I guess, around Atomic IBC. Um, and uh, we're still working out a lot of the details, but I think we have some promising directions on making it work for, so Atomic IBC would be the idea that you could have um, atomic transactions uh, between replicated security consumer chains because they share the exact same validator set. You could flip them into a mode where, you know, uh, where, where it's, it's, it's uh, where an IBC transaction happens instantly, sort of like a, a contract a function call between contracts on Ethereum. IBC, IBC message between different chains could just be everything could be evaluated all at once. Um, and uh, and then and then for the rest of the time, you know, with replicated security of multiple chains going in parallel, so it's more scalable. So I've um, been thinking about that. Um, and also I'm started also sort of part of that is 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 sort of I'm starting to develop the view that like with uh, mesh security and eigenlayer and and there are other many other shared security projects now I think we're gonna have a security marketplace where basically anybody can get security from anywhere and so I think that um, in that marketplace it's kind of going to be hard to be differentiated if you just are providing security and that's all you do um, I think we're going to want to um, I think I think you you know you, you, if you're going to be successful in that marketplace you need to have a differentiated product and I, I'm I'm I have a strong belief now that a, that atomic uh, composability is such a differentiated product. Um, but anyway, I'm, I'm still it's still a little scattered. I'm bringing it all together, uh, writing writing something up, and and I'll, I'll release that when it's when it's ready. Um, also, um, been you know been following the the mesh um, you know with the, the the mesh security development and keeping up to date with that, and uh, done some uh, added some kind of reviews for their documentation and stuff like that. Um, kind of staying on top of it um and um another thing that's that i've been thinking about is that there's this proposal that's come up on the forum for uh for somebody who wants to add cosmosm to the hub and um it's kind of interesting because that's something that i'm in i'm in favor of um 
and, and I think you know many of us here are in favor of it. Um, of course, it was uh, it was rejected uh, last year, and the proposal on the forum is actually pretty much kind of the same proposal that got rejected last year, where somebody's saying, or in my opinion, maybe even like you know, it's it's somebody saying that like we're going to have, a, oh, if we add Cosmos and we're going to have all these Cosmos maps that are going to pop up, it's going to be great. And I think that was the governance last year that people decided, well, we want to, we want a use case. So that's what it seemed like to me, at least was, was there's a lot of stuff where it's like, you know, people weren't really sure what it was going to be used for. And um, so with this proposal, um, what we, what we had planned, so with Adam Accelerator and with the Mesh Group and stuff, we had planned to bring out a proposal for Cosm, permission Cosmos in the hub, uh, kind of in tandem with Mesh Security, and basically have it be like, here's why we are bringing in Cosmos. And it's not just, you know, because it's nice to have or whatever, but because there's a specific thing we want to run. Um, and so I think that, like, this forum proposal like if it goes to chain uh if this this one that somebody's currently written um it's kind of like i i think that like i would be concerned that maybe it would get rejected again um and so i want to prepare for that uh that happening um and kind of just sort of get ahead of it i guess um and i i think that it's i think that if people want to reject it because it doesn't specify, you know, a use case for Cosmosm. I think that's um, a position that's like, you know, justifiable position. But I also think that maybe we should. Uh, I, I, I don't want to kind of shape the conversation around it to have it be about like, you know, do we want this now or do we want it later? Uh, versus it, you know, I, I wouldn't want to see mesh security get rejected on the hub twice. Um, I feel like that would set like, <laughs> you know, a precedent, uh, and then it might be hard to get it accepted to run me mesh security, which we we definitely want. So um, I'm going to write, a, I think I'm going to write another, I've commented on the post, I'll write another forum post kind of expressing uh, those views um, soon, maybe today. Um, so, uh, and then the other one is is opt-in security. Um, so that's opt-in security is also formerly known as V2, um, is interchange security V2, is the ability for validators to decide which consumer chains they want to um, support. And um, I specified kind of, it was a rough draft for sure, um, but I specified an early draft of how you would make that work with the current interchange security code base. Uh, months ago in March or something, I think. And so um, I could, uh, we, and, this, and I came, came back to it um, and there, there might be some stuff where we might want to do it differently. Um, but basically um, I, um, one thing I'm thinking about is whether we want to do opt-in security, like with the current code base or whether we want to try to do opt-in security like by utilizing mesh security, because mesh security could potentially be configured such that it would effectively be opt-in security. So I need to think about that a little bit more um, because that will determine, uh, that will be determine a lot of work for the team. Um, it'll be like, are we going, um, are we going in and making a lot of big modifications to the current replicated security code base, or are we, um, or are we going and and you know contributing more to mesh or you know providing uh, sort of these modifications which will let you use it as like opt-in security basically? So um, that's something I need to think through. I don't really have a solid answer on that yet. Um, but yeah, that's uh, kind of what I've been working on, and um, I'll be publishing you know parts of that as uh, like the fraud votes uh, prop and, and you know whatever. Um, However, I want to end up framing the, the Cosmos and versus Mesh stuff. And um, we'll also be discussing Atomic IBC um, tomorrow in the informal spaces, uh, Twitter spaces. So um, I don't have a link to that, but maybe I'll, I'll put the link in this agenda maybe afterwards. So that's, that's what I got so far. Any, any questions? Oh, another one. I see Thomas here. Hi, Thomas. Uh, thanks for joining. Thomas Briel. Um, and... Uh, one of the other things that we didn't think we were, me and Marius were just talking about was the um, equivocation uh, evidence um, verification. So that's basically, you know, cryptographic equivocation verification. So, um, and as Marius was saying, it's kind of challenging. And so we were kind of going back, we had this pausing the unbondings thing. Um, so you would like, which makes the current governance-based solution a little bit better. 
um, by pausing by pausing it until uh, you're able to you know slash a validator who did something bad potentially. But um, so we were just talking about that this morning again, actually. Um, and the concern is that by pausing it though, you'd make it so that like maybe an attacker could like pause someone's unbondings indefinitely, which would be a problem. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah, that's that's all I got so far. So we should move on to, uh, if there's no questions, um, if there are questions, speak up, but if there are no questions, uh, move on to uh, Haifa, I guess. Yeah, happy to do that. Thanks, Johan. Uh, so yeah, last couple of weeks, Haifa's work has been, uh, well, last week was a lot of kind of operational support for Stride. Congratulations to the Stride team for their launch. Uh, nice to see a boring consumer chain launch. It's always good. Um, today, we also did uh, three upgrades to testnets. So we upgraded at the standard release Cosmos Hub public testnet with the 11. We also upgraded the replicated security testnet, which has you know a bunch of consumer chains as persistent chains uh, running uh, with V11. That gives some additional confidence around the V11 upgrade. And uh, we worked with the Neutron team to upgrade Pion 1, which is their uh, persistent uh, uh, testnet as well. Um, so at this point, we're pretty comfortable with V11. So I believe today uh, the V11 prop is going to go uh, up to vote on chain. Um, the other thing that we've been focusing on is the LSM module edition, which is going to go into V12. Um, been testing on a, a Gaia fork. Um, we've kind of decomposed the test cases into five categories. Um, three of them have been completed. There are two categories that are still remaining. I have the list in the doc if folks are curious. Um, we should have most of this completed by end of, uh, end of this week, mid next week. Um, and uh, the other part that's kind of remaining here is that we are working to add this to our standard um, CI test suite as well. Um, and uh, in addition to that, we also completed uh, the V11 uh, uh, removal of the gravity decks. Uh, so this is the, the stuff that uh, Dong Sam did. Um, and uh, I have a list of like the, the conditions that were evaluated. Um, it was tested on a migrated or an exported Genesis from Cosmos Hub. The date was July 18th. Um, yeah, those details are in the doc if anybody's curious. Um, other than that, uh, we are going to continue focusing on V12 testing. And uh, we've also started working with the Noble team on onboarding them into replicated security. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it for me. Cool. Um, so yeah, is there, are there any questions um, about anything we discussed here from, you know, anyone? <laughs> so otherwise we're at the end of our agenda here. No, my, my old comment, uh, which is, you know, had baby was away a bit. Um, so I think there are a couple of open PRs on the hub uh, that probably need merging and cleansing and all that good stuff. And I'll merge and cleanse or they've been closed and that's fine too. And uh, yeah, all right, have a great rest of your day. Uh, yeah, Jacob, thanks for reminding about the, for bringing that up. There are a few, we are looking into them. For some, I think we we are waiting for some uh, uh, for some feedback from you. I think some uh, on Intergen Security, there are a few that just need, uh, uh, I think just uh, a linting thing, so to run the formatting, to be able to pass the linter uh, CI, but uh, yeah, we are looking in all of that. So let's continue the conversation on GitHub. And we'll get them. Uh, we'll get them in. Sounds great. Thank you. Cool. Um, actually, one other thing. I see Riley here, um, 
And uh, that's Riley from Stride, right? Yeah. Hey. Nice. I was wondering uh, if you, yeah, one, I was wondering how you feel like the LSM review process is going, because um, that's the big, you know, major ag agenda item that we have, you know, coming up after the 11th. So I was wondering, um, yeah, I mean, I've, I've been I've been looking at individual conversations on there and commenting on some of them. Um, I haven't personally not gone through all the code, but I was just wondering if you have any updates there. Or... Yeah, well, I just spoke with Marco and Bez. They the last big blocker is getting their review, but they mm -hmm. said that in fact they didn't review ICS until it was upstream in the SDK or until it was pulled into a separate repo. So they said they probably aren't going to review this either in the same way. So we might be okay to not get their green check, check mark and uh, move forward with a review from occlusion on the LSM specific changes from you and Marius and uh, Julian and the rest of the um, folks who already reviewed on the ISS, ICS overlap. And then from, um, from stride on uh, some of the LSM logic, as well mm -hmm. as persistence. Okay, I, lots of information to have. Um, so I, the uh, SDK team does not want to review it. We'll not be reviewing the uh, LSM. Yeah, that's what uh, that's what Marco said. Okay. Yeah, good to know. Uh, it will be so. Thanks, Riley, for the info. It will be useful, though, so I don't expect them to have the same review. So I wouldn't expect them to have the same review style as for things that go in mainline SDK. However, there is an SDK branch that will go on the hub. And there are at, at least there are a bunch of comments still open that are uh, tagging either Mark or Buzz, and it will be useful if they can at least reply to those yeah. and uh, check in general if there is something uh, not really following the SDK, I, I don't know, main guidelines or something, right? It's, uh, I, I don't think the, the code is changing quite a bunch of things, but indeed the LSM logic, I don't expect them to review it or how it, that fits with interchange security. We looked into that. Inclusion looked into that. You guys looked into that. So I think uh, I think we are quite okay there. But the SDK part with iterators and uh, access to state and all this stuff, um, changing uh, changing proto files and everything else that is there, that may be useful for them to have a look. Yeah, I, I think I can get them to respond to the review comments that tag them. I, I've had a a lot of difficulty getting them to review the whole thing. Mm -hmm. okay. I've tried just about everything at this point. And I don't feel like I have a bunch of leverage. Um, yeah. Well, we don't have a lot of leverage either. Um, so I, yeah. I think um, it's there. there's a question basically about, this is like the interesting thing about this is that like uh, there, there's a question, somebody has to make the determination that it's ready, um, that it's ready to release. And it's also something that's like, you know, not necessarily something we can go to governance on either because it's too small and nuanced of a question for governance. Um, so yeah, at some point we'll just have to, um, we'll just have to, uh, yeah, pull the trigger. Um, yeah. Well, there's one another detail. place where there are, oh yeah, yeah, go ahead. I was yeah, I'll just finish up quickly. One detail, they did review it when it was in the inclusion repo. Nice. Okay. Okay. Cool. So they, they have looked through the code base. They just haven't looked through it in this SDK branch. Yeah. Okay. Um, cool. Well, we'll be in communication about that. And um, yeah, just try to figure out when it's when it's ready. Um, sounds like it's getting there. Oh, one other yeah. thing uh, involving the SDK, uh, and I'll just bring this is an interesting top. Oh, actually, it's good that you're here, Jacob, too. Um, there is this, there is still there's still this issue on Neutron of, and this is good for you to know about as well, Riley from from Stride. There's this issue on Neutron where it, where it kind of like goes down or halts for a little while. Um, it used to be once a week, uh, and now apparently it's now it's apparently it's two times a week. Um, and this is an issue that we track down as being um, as resulting from uh, the uh, essentially soft opt out. Uh, basically, soft opt out lets 
a larger number of validators be down for a longer time um, than maybe the SDK was designed for. Um, and so uh, what's happening is that that just, it was being stored, it's being stored inefficiently um, in the database. And so when uh, when that stuff uh, gets processed, it's just slow and it actually slow enough to like slow down, you know, block production enough to make the chain kind of halt. So uh, temporarily every once in a while. So um, first of all, that's something that probably uh, Stride should be aware of too. Um, and I don't know if we've talked about that yet. We don't want a situation where Stride like runs worse because it's a consumer chain, obviously. Uh, Neutron though does have some aspects to how they do their chain, which uh, which exacerbate this problem um, because they have fast block times, and so they just have a lot more downtime records being um, being stored. Um, so Stride I think has normal block time, so it's going to be like uh, maybe a quarter of 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 the you know a quarter of the amount. Um, and then Jacob, I remember you had come up with a, this is when this issue first came up a long time, you know, a long time, but, you know, a, a while ago, like a month or more ago, you had come up with a, um, a possible mitigation, right, Jacob? Like, uh, we're using yeah. some sort of uh, IEVL fast note. Bingo. Uh, for, for Neutron, that should fix it. Okay. Um, I don't know actually if it's been tested because, you know, I went out, uh, babying, um, mm -hmm. but can you give me some indication? What, what's the interval? I know it's 140,000 blocks, but what's that work out to like in days for that downtime window? I believe that's supposed to be like three days, I think. Three days, okay. Because I can put up a node and a relay because I also want to finish my, my relay docs for Neutron. Uh, I, I have a guide put together. The actual issue is state sync, but let's not go too far off topic. Anyhow. You can put up a node, I can put up a relayer, and I, I think that just with fast node that should solve it. And also I had a comment for stride, which is that since you guys are on 47, you should not be affected. No, um, hopefully that's not the case. Um, that's the second part, which I can get to here. But first of all, if it can oh, be yeah, solved, please do. <laughs> if so the IVL fast node stuff, I guess you were gonna try that out um and see if it works. Did you ever try it out on your own infrastructure? Yeah. Um, all of our, so all of our gear is Fastnode plus mm. Pebble. Okay. Uh, that's, a, that's like everything that's in the Cosmos CS system. Um, the thing is, I'm just trying to think about observability for the actual problem. And let me actually ask you a question real quick, Jihan, which is, what's why would stride be affected because basically with 47 fast note is on by default oh and, I, yeah 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 well well the second part of this yeah just to, to be let's to get back into the fast note stuff because that's the easy solution then that's best but um they have a fix for the storage um so there's a fix for the storage it's merged now it's in main it's in cosmos dk main and uh what it does is it just stores the stuff more efficiently um and so that should fix it whether you're on fast mode or not. However, um, I don't believe that is in 47. Um, and I think maybe it's going to be in 50, but I'm not sure about that either. Um, I'm not sure if the contents of main, I, 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 I could look into it. I'm not sure if it's in 50, but basically I, I'm pretty sure it's not in 47. So um, if IAVL fast mode fixes it, then I suppose we will see a 47 consumer chain not having a problem at all. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and the second thing you were talking about is like the new store with collections and and crazy super great speed. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I haven't looked into the issue enough, but I don't know if it's new store. Um, I think it's just that they're using an actual, um, like I think they were using like a bunch of sep. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not an expert on how the how the actual code looks, so I might be wrong on any of this. But I think what was going on is they were using, uh, they were storing like sort of like actual. Um, they were sorting like actual booleans and like individual records or something. So it ended up being like a huge number of records. And then they switched to using a bitmap um, to store things more efficiently or something like that. Um, and so um, that is the fix, I believe, is just storing things more efficiently. But I'm not sure if that fix also like depends on some more general store improvements they've done. Um, so 
where that comes in is whether it can be backported to 47. Um, so uh, yeah, okay, yeah, this the, the bitmap that was the exact thing causing the thrashing, right? It was the bitmap of of that could cause downtime slashing, I think, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And so, so that would be fixing that fix would would fix it regardless of whether you have fast or not. Um, but if fast right. fixed by itself, and then you know, it'd be nice if it was also being stored properly. But you know, we can get to that if it's not a problem, then it's not a problem. So um, that's that's the thing I'm wondering right now is like you know, if if fast means it's not a problem, then like you know, first of all, number one, establish that, and then number two, we could go to the um, the the neutron validators and publicize like you know here's you know, you know set this in your config and, and it won't be a problem anymore and then that would be a great great fix so that was how it works but I'm just not sure on any of that so yeah all right well I, I can I can try tomorrow to get this up we're getting we're getting young Seniot's passport uh, mm -hmm. so I may not be able to work tomorrow or I may be able to work tomorrow because you know United States government and who knows um, but yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, what I mean is I, I, I need to set up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah no worries. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But just, uh, I guess that's that's kind of, I also have a discussion going on uh, with, I need to check back. I, I brought this up yesterday with the Neutron team um, on whether they want to work on backporting. Um, but yeah, if 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 this fast known stuff fixes it, then I suppose um, there would be no point in that. So let's let's stay in communication on that. And um, also maybe it's something that somebody from Haifa could could test out. I mean, it seems relatively simple, right? Could we uh, run a full node? Uh, could Haifa maybe run a full node? It would, you would see would see the improvement on on a full node, right? It wouldn't have to be having. Uh, yeah, you. Well, OK. The difference between a validator and a full node is that once the block has propagated, the full node will be in. Do you remember osmosis back in the day when they had those, the really long APOC times? Osmosis, osmosis o'clock, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And um, so they, you know, actually, they didn't. Act. Yes, you're correct. It, you would be able to see it because on each node, it's processing the state, and in that case, what it was doing was going through all these iterators, and every node would conclude as quickly as it could and then come back up. And the only difference with the validator is that you'd be able to see uh, the, the vote. Um, so you're correct. Uh, doing it with a, a full node will work fine. Um, Haifa, if if you're here, if you can hear me, yeah. basically the way I was going to do this uh, was stand up a Gaia, stand up a Neutron, stand up a Stride, stand up a Hermes. Um, and the, the reason to do all of those is the Hermes will kind of stress the nodes a little more and, and you'll get something that's like as close as possible to real world, although... We just run a full node for real the real neutron. Would we that... have? Well, yeah, we also yeah, just like have can. the test net with exactly that configuration. Um, you, I don't think you'd want to do a test net because, as far as I know, the test net won't experience this problem. You need a large um, number of validators down. Is what you need. Yeah, so you have that on I main. See. You could do it on a test net, but it might be a lot of work. Got it. Yeah. And so what is it that we're running? We're running Gaia with this, or, or all of these nodes with this IAVL fast node. Yeah, actually, well, you could just run Neutron with fast node to find out. And, and basically you, you, what you're checking for is when you hit that mystery block, which is uh, every 140,000 blocks, it's going to do downtime slashing or check for downtime mm -hmm. slashing. And when it does that, it, it gets crazy slow. There will be one block in there where that occurs and you know you want to see if your node processes that block faster you know guys i also forgot another thing 
while IAVL fast node was the larger of the two performance increases, there is one very simple thing that we can tell validators. Uh, NVMe disks, uh, you know, I, I can go as specific as saying Samsung 980s, but if, if, if you're buying a server to host Neutron, the worst thing that you can do is use like uh, AWS uh, EC2. And the reason for this is that when you do that, you're buying abstracted spinning storage. So one, you have the performance of a spinning disk, and then two, you have uh, network latency because you're actually using pooled storage. Um, so an easy piece of guidance for Neutron validators would be like, hey, are you using a virtual machine? Ah, you are? Okay. Uh, can, can you tell me a little bit about the virtual machine? Because by the way, guys, some virtual machines will perform totally on par with bare metal. And it all really has to do with the degree of abstraction. Well, um, I mean, that would be a difficult, that would be the worst case if we had to get everybody to switch their infrastructure, even if maybe they should. Um, so I think our order of operation is going to be, can it be fixed with a simple config setting? Um, we could also just go and tell all the Neutron validators, hey, turn on IAVL Fastnode. Um, I mean, it's something in the config.toml, right? Like we could just do that and not even try to test it out, like, you know, in a theoretical sense. Would there be any problem with that? Um, with, with Fastnode, there is no problem with testing. Yeah. So we can just go to the node. neutral validators and say, everybody, Hey, switch your stuff over. Then maybe it's not even, uh, an, an issue anymore. Um, I don't know. The other thing I will say, that's what I was going to do actually. Yeah. That, yeah. Yep. If that is, if that would fix it, then I guess it would be a, that would be a very easy solution. And maybe, maybe it's not worth testing out beforehand. Maybe it's better just to try it. And then see if it fixes it. And then if it doesn't fix it, keep moving on. The other thing is, as we see stride. So if we do see this happening with stride, then we'll know it wasn't the IAVL fast note stuff because uh, they have that because they're on 47. So, um, and then if we find out the IAVL fast note doesn't work through whatever one of these methods, then we're going to start looking at the backporting stuff. And most likely what we'll do is probably backport to fix 247 um, and then have a, a branch of four, a fork of 47 that consumer chains can use. Uh, or best case scenario, if, if it is necessary, perhaps it could be upstreamed into the real 47, um, which, but that's a discussion with the SDK team and their version numbers and, and whatnot. So um, yeah, I'll, um, I'll maybe pull together a Slack channel with the relevant people um, and um, we can go from there, I guess. Cool. All right. Cool. Thanks everyone. Any, anything Thank else? You. No, nah, it's for me. Okay. All right. Um, that's it then. Bye, everybody. Thanks for hosting, Bye. Kian. Thanks. Thanks Bye.